All right, sorry about that. Let's see if this fixes our issue. I'm showing that I'm in the wrong orientation on my computer screen. Let's see if there we go. Now Facebook and I are working well together. So anyway, as I was saying in my first aborted attempt, let me play with that a little bit. Um, we're going to make do a couple of things tonight. The first is we're going to make the card that you can see on my wiggly screen right there. Good Lord, I'm having problems with the uh, technology today. We'll let it go right there and see how that works out. Anyway, this is the card. You got kind of a sneak peek of it this morning on my blog post. Um, sorry, but I like to do it like that. This uses the amazing, wonderful, bestest sweet I've seen in the three years I've been doing this now. The Delightful Daisy Sweet from the new 2017-2018 annual catalog. And folks, I got to tell you, just this is just me. If there was no other reason to sign up to be a demonstrator right now, being able to get this right now would be that reason. I would want this right now. Um, so anyway, th like I said, if you sign up right now, you can uh, order some of these pre-order things as part of your startup kit. Hey, Paula. Hi, Karen and Karen. We've got two Karens on. Um, is this looking okay? Somebody tell me that this camera is looking all right to y'all. I got things kind of cockamamie today. I'm sorry. So anyway, Delightful Daisy, bestest set ever. I love it. I love it. Love it. Um, this is the this is the Delightful Daisy um, DSP, and then we have the Daisy Punch with the uh, Daisy Delight stamp set, and it's just wonderful. And I paired it up with a cute little sentiment from Tiny, Teeny Tiny Wishes, uh, which is a wonderful little stamp set. I was so glad to see that it continued on. And then here in the background, you see a little doily, and I'm going to show you the trick to that in just a hot second. That's the inside. But first, I did have a request from one of my friends and customers to show again how to use the stamp -a jig And since the, um, with the exception of the teeny tiny wishes, this is all photopolymer, um, this isn't really the right set to be showing that, so I'm going to show you um, as I make the inside of my card that you're going to see on Tuesday, I'm going to move those things out of the way. On Tuesday, the Amy's Ink and Crew is having a blog hop, and the theme is Masculine Card. So, here's a little sneak peek. Nobody else will get it, only those folks who are on the video, or who watch the video tomorrow. So, this is a card that I intend to send to the very nice gentleman that came and helped me with Finn the other day. Um, it uses lovely as a tree. Now I know, I know, I know, I know that there are some folks out in Stampin' Up! Demonstrator land who are not thrilled that the lovely as a tree is still looking, is still in the catalog. But I love this set and I will be happy if it just continues for, well, as long as the pine trees. So you can see that's kind of a sneak peek. So what I want to do is um, put in my second sentiment, thankful thoughts, great little stamp set with uh, for all thank you kinds of things. And I'm going to put in the second sentiment here. My front says, sending thanks to a very gracious giver. And I'm going to put on the inside from a very grateful getter. And I'm also going to stamp another of the lovely as a tree pine trees. So I will use my stamp of my jig for both of those things. Um, this is just going to be a very vanilla panel with a crushed curry mat. We'll set that aside. And I have here my um, pine tree from Lovely as a Tree. So to use the stamp of my jig um, with these rubber stamps and regular ink, regular classic ink, you want to use the smooth side of the stamp of my jig. All right. The first thing you do is you put the corner of the stamp of jig acetate right smack up in the corner like that of the tool, the stamp of jig tool. All right. Then you ink up your image. Yes, Karen, lovely as a tree is the best. I love it so much. Hey, Jean, glad you're on. Hey, Robbie. 
Um, for all of you ladies, you'll be glad to know that I should have catalogs in my hand tomorrow, and they will go out, depending on what time they deliver to me tomorrow, they should go out tomorrow even. Okay, so then, and I'm going to turn this kind of cock cockamamie because I've got it on my long block, and that makes it harder. I'm going to take this top left-hand corner of my block, and I'm going to shove it right up in the top of that corner right there. So it's going to, the top of the block is really going to align with the top corner of the acetate, okay? And I just stamp that on there. So what that has essentially done is it has shown me exactly where the image is on this rubber stamp. This is how, this is part of how you can uh, avoid putting those little stickers on there because you can always see exactly where the image is. And let's be, let's, let's just face it, even if you put that sticker on, it really isn't all that useful all the time unless you are like perfect at putting it on. It's really not that great. All right, so here we go. So what I want to do is I'm going to stamp this off a few times because my plan is to put this in the center and then I'm going to put in the same um, Always Artichoke color, I'm going to put my sentiment. So I need my tree to be uh, rather significantly fainter than the sentiment, okay? So let's see. I've already stamped it. We're going to... This is why I always have my grid paper because I want to see how much I've got as far as color goes. So that's obviously too much. I even think I would call that too much. That's three. I actually kind of like four, so I'm going to ink it up again and I'm going to stamp it off three times and then on the fourth time I'll stamp my card. Alright, so one, two, three, and then line up my tree where I want it with the acetate of the Stampamajig. Then I put the tool back and I put it right where the top corner of the acetate is. I put that top corner right in the corner of the tool. And then you take the acetate away and once again you line up the top corner of your card or of your block with the corner of the tool. And so there you get the image right where you want it. So now let me show you that again, this time with the, the sentiment. And it's got four corners. I've covered one of mine, obviously, with a name tag because I took it to, um, I think I took it to the World Card Making Day. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that off. We'll just pretend like I'm not going to need it again. Sometimes I like to hang on to it so that I don't have to reposition when I, you know, screw up. Hey, Karen, how are you? My goodness, we've got Karen Isley, Karen Finkel, and Karen... Ah, one more Karen, whose name fell away. Karen... K-S-E-N's of... I don't want to screw that up, Karen, so you know who you are. All right, so now we're going to stamp... We're going to do this again. Top corner of the acetate goes into the corner of the tool. Stamp off once to be sure that we've got the everything in the right orientation. Put the corner of the acrylic block in the corner of the tool, down and up. And then use the acetate to identify where you're going to have your sentiment. Try to get it as straight as I can. It isn't always as straight as it should be. And then once you have the asset, have the sentiment or the image where you want it, you put your tool back on in the corner of the acetate, pick the acetate up and put it away, and then come back with your sentiment. There we go. That's not exactly perfectly straight, but I think it's good enough. So that is how you use the stamp of a jig, and it is highly highly handy all right so now let me put all of this stuff away so that i can find it again to finish the card again you'll see that one on tuesday in the amy's ink and crew blog hop all right get those going 
and get this going because I want that to plug. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over just because, you know, it's easier to see, I think, without all the extra stuff. Y'all, if you don't have this paper grid, this grid paper, get it. I think it's like 11 or $12 for a giant stack. It lasts a long time. Um, and what's so fun about it, what's so neat is if you're using a, like a silicone mat as your basic surface, when you stamp and get ink like off the edges, that ink doesn't dry right away. And so if you come back with your cardstock or your fingers or any other part of your body like I would and have and did, you're going to get ink on you and then it's going to transfer to your card. So being that it's paper, it tends to dry just as quickly on this as it does on your card. All right, so let's make us let's make us a Mother's Day card. For those of you who came in a little after eight, um, here is the card that we're making today. This uses the delightful Daisy set, and for the sentiment, I'm using Teeny Tiny Wishes. If you don't have Teeny Tiny Wishes, really, you should get it. It's going to be here for another year, so it's got a lot a lot of life left in it. And you can see it's got Happy New Year, Father's Day, Retirement, Valentine's, Sympathy, Shower, Baby, Easter. I mean, it, it's got them all. And as the name implies, they're little. And the thing that's fun about that is that they work perfectly for the classic label punch, which is what I used on this, on this card. So let's, let's get to going, shall we? All right. Doing okay so far? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a Misty Karen. I, I've heard a rumor that there's going to be a Stampin' Up! version of a Misty, so I'm kind of holding out for that. Um, but if we don't get it in the next year or so, <laughs> I'm going to be getting a Misty because I hear good things about it. But I've used this Stampin' Majig now for two years, and I've gotten um, pretty good at it. I You don't have quite the same goodness of uh, for re-inking and re-stamping images that you might with the Misty, but but it's pretty good. Okay, so let's get started. Here's what you need. This, this has to be my favorite design in the Delightful Daisy DSP. I just, it's just spectacular. I think it should be matted and framed. It, it's just a beautiful piece of paper. So this is going to be my card front. It's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, and I'll put all of these onto the blog um, when we get done here. And then you're going to have a second piece of the DSP, and it is 3 and 3 eighths by 4 and 5 eighths. And then you have the appropriate mats for each one. And we have a piece of uh, Whisper White for the inside with its mat, and these mats are Daffodil Delight. And then I've got my envelope ready to go and a piece of paper for the envelope flap. And then these two scrap pieces to cut out my little doily and my daisies. So first of all, we're going to use some fast fuse and we're going to get the uh, the card front matted on our Daffodil Delight. So, you know, I told you today that we went to see the movie. Well, we didn't because after I got up and I was drinking my coffee, I realized that we had obedience class <laughs> at 3 o'clock. And there was no possible way to go to a 12 o'clock movie on the other side of town and then get back to pick up the dog and go to a movie. So we will be going next weekend. We planned to go on Saturday, but today the teacher of the obedience class changed our class to Saturday at 3 in light of Mother's Day on Sunday. So I think we'll be going, we'll be celebrating Mother's Day at the movies. All right, now I'm just going to mat the second uh, piece of DSP. Okay, so this might be my second favorite DSP pattern in that in that set. It's just so pretty. I just haven't had a, I don't think I've used it yet. I'm pretty sure I haven't. So anyway, Guardians of the Galaxy remains a mystery to me until next week. Yeah, Robbie, you are correct. The stamp of jig is a great thing. And it, in fact, that's kind of why I've been hesitant on top of it not being a Stampin' Up! item. That's kind of why I've been hesitant about the Misty because the stamp of jig is so simple. It's like, it's the analog version of a, of a stamp aligner. Okay, so now that I have those two pieces matted, I'm just going to uh, adhere 
them together with, yes, as you might have guessed, some more fast views. This fast views feels like it's wanting to be about done. It kind of went everywhere. All right. And then we're going to put it pretty much centered. There we go. All right. So now let me show you a fun little trick. Fun little trick, fun little trick using the Eastern Medallion Thinlets and your layering circles dies. Actually, I need the scallop for it. No, I don't. That was the other card. Okay. So, what we're going to do, and you can use any combination you want, uh, we're going to make a doily, basically. And this little set will allow you to make a doily in any color cardstock that you need or want, which is kind of handy. I think. You can see I've left all my cardstock in. That shouldn't be a problem. So I'm just going to use this large outside ring and then one of the medium inner rings and this set as so. And I'm going to just use a piece of this scrap paper and get it lined up. You know what? Let me change out right quick to my magnetic. I'm going to change out to my magnetic platform because it just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit easier. And I'm about easy on a Sunday night. I'm about that easy. All right, so there we go. Make sure it's in the camera. And just line it up so that you've got an equal amount of distance between all of the dies. Yeah, Paul, I know. Covering up the DSP is hard. But just remember, just remember, it's here for a whole year. So you can just buy DSP until until you're rolling in it. And then just, you know, at the end you have to figure out a you just have to figure out how to get it all gone. But remember, you cover it up on one card and leave it open on another. I'm going off camera here for just a minute, y'all, to make this cut. There we go, and then you'll notice that this doesn't cut it out. So what to do, what to do? I'm going to push these little pieces out first with my handicraft pick. And then, so did y'all, those of you who are demonstrators and have seen the catalog, you notice that the wonderful lace doilies that um, had very vanilla on one side and whisper white on the other are not in there. All that remains are the tea, the paper tea doilies, the large ones. And I was very disappointed with that. I'm still disappointed, let's be honest. But now that I have discovered a way to make as many doilies in as many colors as I want, I'm good to go. So, now what we're going to do with this is take the largest of the layering circles framelits, and depending on the card that you're making, and you'll see Monday's card, tomorrow's card is going to show you where I cut this out with the scalloped version. So all you do is you just put it right there, and since we're going to be cutting it, it doesn't really matter. And you could actually even skip this step, but it's a little easier to me. For me, if I can uh, get it cut out to work it. So hang on, off camera one more time, exit stage left. And when I am back, I have step two of my doily. And this has run its course for now, setting it aside. Now, I just take my paper snips. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and I'm going to snip the little duhas. That's what I call those duhas. I think that is a technical term. And you'll have to sign up to be a demonstrator in order to use it. 
All right, so don't use it if you're not a demonstrator. Now, just since I have Eastern the medallion in my hand, let me remind you that tomorrow is the last day for my ordering special. If you order the premium bundle, you will get a couple of uh, free goodies from me, including double peppermints and, let me put these away before I lose them, and an embellishment pack, my choice. You won't know until you open it up. Uh, an embellishment pack from the new catalog. All right. What kind of a pokey tool do I have? This is, uh, shoot, I can't read it. It's the Ionic Studios. It's a Tim Holtz. This is from way back when I first started stamping in 20, I don't know. I went to, um, probably bought it at Michael's. You can also get them on Amazon. But it's really handy because it extends so you can really poke it a long way. And also it's incredibly sharp. Don't ask me how I know that. All right, so next, here's a reminder of where we're headed. We're going to make a daffodil. We're gonna do that with the beautiful Daisy Delight set. And we're going to stamp We're going to stamp the daisy twice, and here's a trick to help you with the punch that I've momentarily lost. Stand by, everybody. Do not panic. Do not panic. I have lost my daisy punch. Holy samole shamil. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, seriously, you guys, I, I can't find the punch. Ah, there it is. Hidden in plain sight. Good Lord. Okay, so here's a trick with this punch. You'll see that the there's a spoke of the petals that goes straight up and down. If you will stamp your image straight up and down with one spoke, then you're going to be a lot happier. All right, so I'm going to stamp this twice with a Daffodil Delight. And straight up and down. About a count of three right there. Tell Finn to return it. No kidding, Paula. That is about right. That is about right. And then we'll stamp another one. All right. Boom. Like so. Okay, now I'm going to keep my... Um, I'm going to keep my ink pad out and I'm going to give it a little squish because what I want to do is transfer some of that Daffodil Delight ink to the lid of the pad. And then I'm just going to take a, uh, I have 70% uh, rubbing alcohol in here, which doesn't mean anything because al rubbing alcohol is kind of 70%. So I don't think you can get more. But I use that, and it tends to be a little smoother. So I'm just going to take my aqua pen with my alcohol and pick up a little bit of ink and just lightly, lightly pull some ink up the petals just to give it a little shading. And I'll try to be a little more careful than I was right there. You can see a little goes a long way. And it also picks up a little bit of that classic ink that's already stamped because that's how classic ink works. All right, and then we'll pick up a little more for the other one. Also, you can see I've got a little green, so I must have had a little green left, and that's okay because I have yet to see a perfect flower. And a lot of them have a little green in them because they're, you know, plants. All right, we'll put a little more color there. You don't want to get too wet because this isn't uh, watercolor paper. It'll kind of pill up. And you also want to work a little bit quickly. All right, so we'll let that set for a second and dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to pull out my little center deweys. These are center deweys here. There's two. It's kind of two-step. I'm going to stamp the solid one in pair pizzazz, and then over the top I'm going to stamp 
old olive. Um, so I'm gonna now both of these aren't gonna show, but I'm gonna stamp both of them. Why? You ask? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you why. Because one of the other one of them, I'm not going to do a great stamp, and I'm going to be able, that way I'm going to be able to pick which one I want. So I'm just going to do them both. Okay, sorry guys, i got to pull this towards me a little bit. See what I mean? All right, I got to get my head in the way. But that's apparently going to be the top, right? All right. And we'll get rid of that little image and then we'll stamp over the top of it this old olive in the uh, well this has got little dots I guess like little seeds or something see isn't that cute and I'm just going to do this one because I want to there we go see I even forked that one up so that one's going to go on the bottom. All right, give it a little shake to dry it off, and then we're gonna cut this out. Punch it out, I guess, is more technically accurate. See, by having my spokes go up and down, I matched my punch better, so it just makes it a little bit easier. There's one. Come loose, come loose. Some of those get a little persnickety. Come out of there. Look, did you see what I tried to do there? I was going to go off camera. Like I was going to hide. No, no, no. No hiding. All right. Get this pulled out. There we go. Craft tweezers. Good for all things. And we'll cut the second flower out. Sorry, I can't talk while I do that because I have to hold my mouth just right. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. There we go. All right, now this thing and I are not going to argue right now. All right. So, I kind of like this one better. So all I'm going to do, really, is uh, adhere them together with a little bit of liquid glue. You guys do the same thing I do, where you're just going to use every last drop of that liquid glue no matter how hard it is to get it out of there. All right, put that on, get everything lined up. And by lined up, of course, I mean completely offset. And the cool thing about daisies, if you look at them, is they, they aren't, they're a little perfect, but they're not completely perfect. Ooh, okay. Now, kind of give the top one a little bit of a, a fluff. Give it a little fluff like that right there. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to build our card front. All right, here we go. Let that set for just a second. I'm going to take my uh, medallion that's now a doily, and I'm going to use liquid glue to adhere it to the card front. And you don't need a whole lot. A little bit around the center there. All right. And then just put it about where I want it. And give it a little burnish. All righty. Now I'm going to take some new. This is double stitched ribbon in Daffodil Delight. And it's part of the ribbon and embellishment share. And it's fun because it's cross stitched on one side and double straight stitched on the other. And that, to me, that's just fun. That means I can do almost anyway. I threw one away and pulled it back out, and I'm still getting glue out. I have to pound it, though. Yep, yeah, mm-hmm. Sounds about right, Karen. All right. So all I did here was I took a glue dot. One, I'm getting down to the end of my glue dots. There we go. There's one. I found it. Glue dots. And I just put it in the center of my little doily. And then double over double over the, the ribbon. And we're going to put another little glue dot in that 
double over place. So in other words, I'm going to adhere it together like that with a glue dot, like so. And then we're just going to put it like that, and I'll cut it later. Next up, daffodil, one each. No, this is not a daffodil. This is a daisy. Alrighty. And then we'll put that right there. And because I know I'm going to have a sentiment, I'm going to stick it so that the top flower, so I've got a gap. You see how I did the sentiment on the first one? I put it between a gap of the two, of the t between the top flower petals. So we're going to do that again. And then I'm going to fluff this up a little more. Okay. And give it a good press like that. Okay, and then we'll set it aside so that that glue dot can do its thing. And now, my little tiny teeny weeny sentiment. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Actually, you know what? I already have a Happy Mother's Day, so how about if I change it up? What kind should I make? What should I make? How about thinking of you? I like thinking of you, so I'm going to change this up. All right? Any hooch, all you got to do is use Happy Mother's Day, and then you have a Mother's Day card. But we're going to use Duh, Mary. Okay, where's thinking of you? Thinking of you, thinking of you. Cannot see it. Hmm. There it is. There we go. Okay. Now, even though this is a rubber stamp. I do not need to use a stamp a jig on it because I'm going to punch it out with a punch. So all I got to do is get it within shouting distance of my uh, of the edge of my card and kind of sort of straight and we'll be good to go. So here we go. Thinking of you. This is old olive by the way. And then we'll use the classic label punch and I'm cheating it a little bit you can see in the in the window I'm cheating the sentiment a little bit to the right because I know that I'm gonna have some under my flower okay set that little doha aside pull up my Hard. and then just use some uh, liquid glue and stick it right in there like that. Okay, and the final touch of the card front is one of our new gold faceted gems. And I'm using the largest one, and it's still plenty small enough that you can see the old olive center. So no big. i put that right there like that. And there we go. Now, just trim off my ribbon. Like so. Alright, one card front. Now, we'll do a quick inside, and we can go back to our original. And you'll see I didn't do a whole lot. I did a blank inside and just a few of the little daisies. And then I made some uh, little stems with my Stampin' Write marker. So we'll go ahead and do that. Alrighty. You probably can see how I get a messy desk. I do get a messy desk. I really do. I'm, I'm kind of a messy crafter. There's no doubt about it. Okay. All right, so we have our basic uh, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth whisper white panel. We'll set the uh, mat aside, and I'm using this little. Now this also has a fill image, but I'm not going to use it for this this card. I just wanted it to be kind of clean and kind of simple. So we'll get some daffodil delight back out. Thank you, Robbie. This set just, it's so good. 
It's just so good. It really is so good. All right, and there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason, like most of my cards. Not a whole lot of rhyme or reason. Just going to stamp a few of these. And since for once I'm going to think ahead and not behind, since I'm going to do the same thing on my envelope, I'll just pull it out and do it right now. Right now. I say right now. And we'll just put those here. All right. Set that aside. Get the uh, my old olive. Uh, make sure it's the right one. Old olive marker. And with the thin side, just make a couple of little. All of a sudden, you have stems. Like so. And then. Hey, Skip! Ah! Skip, you would be Gene's nephew, yes? Welcome! Thank you for joining. I will tell Finn you said hello. We're just using some more fast fuse here to put this on our mat. Messy is half the fun. Well, then I've got a whole lot of fun. I've got fun, 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 fun. And she'll have fun, fun, fun till her daddy takes her stamp set away. Okay, there we go. Now... I am putting this in. That is not old olive, Mary. Do not and do not do that. What I'm putting this in is an old olive card base. Not what I had sitting there. So let me get that set right quick. Hang tight. Murmur amongst yourselves. And this is just four and a quarter by 11, and I'm going to score it at five and a half inches. Man, that went bonker bonkers. Fold it over. And give it a little burnish. Oh, Skip, Finn said hey back. He's actually chewing his bone, but... If he could speak, he would say, hey, back. All right. And we'll just put some fast fuse on here. Did y'all see how close I came to putting this card in an old artichoke card base, which would not have been good. It just wouldn't have been okay. Probably would have been okay, but wouldn't have been great. Old olive makes it all pop. All right. So in goes my inner liner. And then I'll pop some 1,000 dimensionals on my card front. Or nine, not 1,000. Thousand. That's an exaggeration, of course. So can you all believe that the other day when I did my pre-order video, I did the whole thing on my personal Facebook page instead of on my business page? So the whole time I'm doing it, I'm refreshing my screen off camera, refreshing my screen, refreshing my screen, trying to figure out why Facebook hates me and is not doing what I want it to do, which was show my video, uh, because I had my Stamps and Lingers page up, and yeah, it was over on my personal page. So I felt kind of silly. But, you know, I might be a technological... <laughs> goofball. All right, here we go. I always double check that I'm putting it on the right way because I'm not saying I've ever put it on the wrong side of the card or, or upside down or anything like that because that would be silly, but I always double check. All right, and then there goes that like so. Give it a little straight. All right, and there is your card that now instead of Mother's Day is thinking of you. And blank on the inside so that you can write your sentiment. Say what you'd like to say. 
Oh, so tonight you went to my personal page first, and you looked and looked, and I wasn't there. Yeah, Karen, you got to just understand you're dealing with a goofus, okay? Okay. Once you acknowledge that and accept it, you know, then you'll be fine. All right, so I've already put my little flowers on here, and I'm going to bang my <laughs> liquid glue <laughs> and put a little thin line. Jeez, old Pete. Jeez, old Pete. Come on. Little thin line. Oh! <laughs> not quite that much. <laughs> that is not a little thin line. Not even with fuzzy math. No. Okay. Hang on. I gotta pick it up. I dropped it on the floor and the dog will have it in a heartbeat. Okay, so let's see if we got it going out. Yeah. Alright, that's the thin line I was attempting to get in the first place. There we go. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. I was really happy with how this card turned out, and it's all because of this suite of products. It really is my favorite thing. All right, so I've just put a little more of the DSP. I always try to use one of the DSPs that's on the front of my card. Um, so that's kind of the formula. I use the DSP, one of them, on the envelope flap. And then on the front of my card, I try to mirror or complement what's on the inside of the card so that it all kind of goes together. That's what I try to do. Sometimes I uh, bamboozle myself by not using DSP, and then I have to come up with something else. Yes, a big blob and then the thin line, yes. So put your big blob in the middle of your envelope flap. All righty. And then we're just fussy cutting that. Easy peasy. Oh, so anyway, what I was saying about my envelope flaps is sometimes if I don't use a DSP on the card, I will stamp some more images on here that complement the front of the card or the inside of the card. And sometimes in the last few months, I've actually made some cards where I put another sentiment here. So like there was one where I put sending smiles here so that that was kind of the thing that uh, that the recipient saw first and I thought that was kind of fun. Thank you Karen, I appreciate it. Uh, you keep your Tombow tip down in a shot glass, that's a very good idea. Thank you Patricia, that is a good idea. I may have to attempt that. Alright, so folks, that is it. But you want to see something, okay, everybody you have two seconds. I'm going to show you both cards. What is the difference? Do you see it? Y'all see it? Come on. Do you see it, don't you? What's the difference? Come on, somebody comment. What's the difference? Oh, come on. Okay, you give up. I reverse the DSPs. Now, I would love to tell you <laughs> that I did that on purpose, but the true thing is it was a complete and total bork. Yep, complete and total bork. I meant to have it, but in many ways, nope, no, nope, it's true. I prefer this one because it shows this beautiful DSP more. But still, I don't think either one of them is ugly. Certainly, I don't think this one is ugly. It's just different. Um, but there you go, kind of a completely different look with the same exact DSP. It's just a little bit different. All right, folks, anybody have any questions? I will um, be on Facebook. I'm going to stop the live video now, but I'll be on Facebook watching some comments. Just so you know, comments don't come up for me to be able to reply to until Facebook gets done posting everything. So if you leave a comment or a question, I promise I will answer it and get back with you. Uh, please take advantage of my ordering special tomorrow. It's the last day. Get you that uh, premium, that premium uh, Eastern Palace bundle, and get your double peppermint points and a free gift from the new catalog. And maybe one of these handmade cards will come with it. I appreciate y'all giving me part of your Sunday evening. I hope you have a great and wonderful week. Thanks so much, guys. Bye bye.